Hey everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Recently, there has been an update to SharpenAI 2 version 3.2. With this new version, Topaz Labs claims that they've updated the AI models, improved the masking, and they have better raw color processing. In this video, we're going to see if that's actually true. In the description below this video, I'll have a link to this web page so you could read about these improvements. And I want to talk about the better raw color processing very quickly. And I'm going to scroll down to that section because I want to explain this because I'm not really going to demo it in this video. Uh, if you use uh, Sharpen AI as a standalone application and you put a raw file into it, that is when this is applicable. If you use Sharpen AI as a plugin, this isn't applicable because when you use Sharpen AI as a plugin in Photoshop or Lightroom, it doesn't send the raw file to it. It sends a TIFF file. So this is only applicable to raw files. So it's only applicable when you use it as a standalone application. And what they're saying now is when you put a raw file directly into Sharpen AI, uh, that they will apply the appropriate DCP camera profile if available, as well as an improved tone curve, resulting in a more accurate version of your photo with better color accuracy. And that, you know, is great. So when you put a raw file into it, it just will look better. But the thing that I want to make you aware of, um, it, down here in parentheses, note, DCP profile and tone curve will not be saved without putting, when outputting as a DNG. Of course, a DNG is a raw file, right? I think... Many of you are like me. When we use Sharpen AI as a standalone app and we put a raw file into it, the reason why we're doing that is because we want to preserve the raw format as long as possible. So if we put a raw file into it, we're going to save the resultant image as a raw file, a DNG file. When you do that, the DCP profile won't get written to that file, which is fine because in a raw file, you could choose your profile. You can't really choose a profile, uh, a camera profile that is, when you're working with a TIFF file or a JPEG. So really the advantage of this is when you use it as a standalone app, you sharpen the image and then you save it as a JPEG or TIFF. Then that better camera profile gets written to the JPEG or TIFF. If you're saving it as a DNG file, it doesn't matter because you could choose a different DCP camera profile in post. So. I hope that made sense. So I'm not really going to be demoing that here, but we're going to talk about these other things, this uh, updated AI models and improved masking. All right. And we're going to use this image. This is a street uh, image that I took in Toronto a few years ago. And I loved the image because I just love the glasses on the young girl. But um, if you look very closely, I miss focus. Uh, the people are blurry. The background's in perfect focus. Um, I shot this with the Fujifilm X-T1, so an older camera, 23 millimeter lens. ISO was 3200, so it had a considerable amount of noise. I've already sent this to Topaz Labs to Noise AI, so I've, I've got rid of the noise. Now I need to sharpen it, and I need to sharpen the people, and I don't want to add any more sharpening to the background, so that's where this improved masking comes in. So again, I'm using it as a Lightroom plugin for this, so I'm just going to right click right on the image. We're going to go down to edit in and then I'm going to go down to Topaz Sharpen AI and I'm going to edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments. So we'll keep this original one so we can compare it back to the um, new one, the improved one. And I'm going to use these uh, specs for the TIFF file and we'll click edit. Now Lightroom, as you can see in the progress bar on the top left hand side, is creating the TIFF file and it will open up in Sharpen AI. And um, I'm going to put auto on, so it's going to auto choose motion blur, out of focus, or too soft. And they've improved these models, so they work better now. And if I click and let go, you probably see that it has, um, it is considerably sharper. Let's zoom in more and drag down here. Okay. If you look at their faces, look at uh, the face of the young girl. There's before 
and there's after before after so it does look pretty good um, I could choose some of these subcategories of normal and that one doesn't look as good now it's not noisy so I wouldn't even pick that because I already used denoise but that looks better with the auto settings I could even try to remove more blur maybe flick it up a little bit more kind of like that I'm starting to see pores on her face now so I think that's good but look at that background you can see how the background's getting really sharp and really overly sharp. So I want to, um, I want to take care of that as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to use masking to apply the sharpening only to the two women in the foreground and not apply sharpening anywhere else. To do that, we're going to go down here to the lower right-hand side and we'll click on this little mask icon. It's really small. And when you do that, this will open up larger down at the bottom. And then over here, what you want to do is find objects. When you click on that, it will look for uh, like the subject of the image and it will look for people. And since we have people in this image, it will look for people. So we'll click on that and it's detecting objects. And right here, you can see it has found a person. So we'll click on that and you can see the mask now. So it did. Uh, mask the people pretty well actually but we could add to or remove from the mask I don't want to sharpen the men in the background and I don't want to or I want to add sharpening like to her hat so we'll go to add and I'm going to go to the softness slider and I'm going to bring softness down a bit so I have a um, a harder edge brush so I'm going to come in here and get all of her hat or at least more of her hat I like that and this the, if, if those of you that have used previous versions of Sharpen AI and have tried to use this masking, uh, you'll once you use this version, you'll see it is considerably better. I'm going to use the left bracket key to make the brush smaller. The right bracket key makes it larger. We'll just come in here and just improve it around this hat a little bit. Now I want to remove it from the person in the background, so I'm going to go and click on sub, that means subtract, and we'll get a larger brush and we'll just paint away the red overlay from the man back here as best we can. And from his legs as well. Come up there in a minute. Like this, I think. Get a smaller brush. So you could get as fussy as you need to be, or you feel you need to be. And this person in the background, here. Get rid of all the overlay. So bear with me, I know this is boring. It's more exciting watching paint dry. And here like that. Now I want to add some to her pants over there. And you know, I'm, it may be that it seemed like I'm being a little bit overly fussy, but I, what I found is the sharpening, when it gets applied and I, and I'm showing you like before, after it looks, you know, yeah, it's sharper. But then when you have masking, it really is very apparent. Like if I accidentally leave this little bit overlaid onto that background, that little part of that background is going to look way sharper than the part just adjacent to it. So it is actually, um, it behooves you to try to be as fussy as possible and to make sure that you're not sharpening where you don't want to sharpen and that you're actually sharpening what you want to sharpen. So just do the best you can to come in here and try to remove the sharpening from anywhere you don't want sharpened and to add sharpening where you think it needs to be sharpened. So you just keep clicking back and forth and doing your thing. And you could do edge aware too, uh, like edge aware. If I turn that on and I go to add, uh, if I'm doing her hat, it theoretically won't go on the background. It's going to stay on her hat. And you could use that as well. Just I'm kind of stubborn sometimes and don't do things that help me. And I could go back to subtract and still keep edge aware on and then come in here and take it away from there. So. Anyway, I think that's good. I, I For this video, I think I've removed it enough from where it needs to be removed and added it 
enough to where it needs to be added. So I'm done. Now over here on the top right hand or the bottom right hand side, you can see apply mask. So we'll apply the mask. All right. And now we'll zoom in more. And you can see now there's before and there's after. Before, after. So you see it did a really nice job. It's just sharpening the two women in the foreground and it's not doing anything to the background. You can see here I missed part of the mask. Hopefully you could see that in the video. Right here I should have removed sharpening. Watch. There's before. That's the blurry non-processed image and there's after and you can see how it's sharpening that little edge of the building right there. So I, you can see that you actually really see the difference more readily when you have the mask applied. But that's good enough. I think that worked out pretty well and we'll click apply. And it's going to then sharpen my image and return me to uh, Lightroom. I'm going to open up the film strip. I'm going to hit the F6 key. Uh, this is our edited sharpened image and there's our unsharpened image. It's going to be difficult to see. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to view and I'm going to lock the zoom position so that when I zoom in you can see the difference. That's our sharpened image. That's our blurry image. Sharpened, blurry. Sharpened, blurry. So that is the update to Topaz Labs Sharpen AI. And I think they've done a nice job. They've been steadily improving uh, this uh, product since it's been released. You may remember when it first came out, I did a video on it. I didn't like it. I didn't think it was very good. But I do, uh, since the updates have happened, I've really, you know, come to like it. And I use it quite often. So... Uh, let me know in your comments below. What do you think of it? Uh, do you use masking a lot? I know I don't often use masking. I probably should use it more, uh, but it's very effective and it works out well. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon. <laughs>